Welcome to another episode of The End of Castles. And this lecture is called Gentile Conversion, Cornelius' House, Part 3. So obviously there's been two more videos prior to this, both of them named Gentile Conversion, but Part 1 was called Cornelius, a Gentile, and I was coming from Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 8, which speaks on a Cornelius who was a Roman soldier. An angel came to visit him and told him to go look for Simon Peter. In Gentile Conversion, Peter's Vision, part two, speaks on Peter and the Holy Spirit speaking to Peter and gave Peter a vision before the men came to see, seek him. Now I am in Gentile Conversion, part three, which is Cornelius' home. As I stated in Gentile Conversion, Peter's Vision, coming from Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 23, Three men has come to Simon the Tanner's house to get Peter and take him to Cornelius' home. Cornelius is a Gentile and Peter is a Jew, and they should not be associating with each other, especially in each other's home. But God gave Peter a vision so he would know this was God's doing. The three men has arrived at Simon's home and explains Cornelius' vision to Peter and what they were instructed to do, which was escort Peter to Cornelius' home. Now, verse 23 was split into two parts, so I will start there. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guest. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went alone. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anything impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the house of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately. And it was good for of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter was astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. 
Then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Wow. What a powerful story. Verse 23 through 24. The next day, Peter started out with them and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. This is when you know somebody loves you, when they want to share their good news or their blessings with you. Cornelius brought together his relatives, close friends, because he knew God was going to do something great and he didn't want them to miss it. Verses 25 through 26. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. Cornelius greeted Peter with respect because he knew God sent for him. Peter gave reverence to God by saying, get up. I'm only a man myself. Verse 27. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. Imagine walking into somebody's house and there's a large number of people expecting you. People you don't know and not of your culture or background. Could be a little frightening. But Peter knew that God had sent him. So he moved forward. Verse 28. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anything impure or unclean. Peter went back to his Jewish laws and tradition, telling them it's against Jewish laws to associate with Gentiles in any way. But God. God has changed Peter's mindset. The vision was becoming clear. We don't have the right to call anything impure or unclean when God leads you to them. Why? Because if God led you to them, they must have cried out to him and he must respond. So who are we to call anything impure that God has made clean? Verse 29. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? So Peter humbly asked, may I ask why you sent for me? Did you notice the politeness, the respect Peter gave them? May I? It sounds insignificant, but it's not. Peter's prior prejudices toward non-Jews will make you not speak to someone with the respect that they deserve. Jews thought Gentiles were unworthy, but God showed Peter that's untrue. Verse 30 through 32. Cornelius answered. Three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. Cornelius tell Peter about the angel in his vision. Verse 33. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Peter can't deny or discredit Cornelius' vision. I mean, not saying that he was trying to because he wasn't. But Peter had a vision that led him to Cornelius, her, the Holy Spirit. Peter humbly submitted to the will of God as in verse 34. Verse 34 through 35. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Peter acknowledges that God shows no favoritism when someone seeks him. He just simply answers. Verses 36 through 38. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Peter tells them of the beginning and escorts them to the Jesus' time. 
that's a good way to start ministering to people who wants to know or eager to know who, what, when, where, and how of the good news. Most Christians say start with the book of John because it gives you more detail and insight into Jesus' life. Verses 39 through 41. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. In verse 39, it's not a fairy tale story to Peter. It's his testimony. There's one thing to be told a story. It is another to know when they have lived it because they have firsthand information. Verse 42. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. Send chills down my spine every time I read it. Mm, mm, mm. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. Verse 43. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Everyone. Not some, not just the Jews, but everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through Jesus' name and a sincere heart. Verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The reward. The gift God wanted to give to Cornelius came. And not only to him, but to everyone connected to him. What a beautiful reward and gift God could have ever given Cornelius. Verses 45 through 46. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. The believers that came with Peter were shocked to see Gentiles receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and praising God. Again, they thought the Gentiles were unworthy. But God showed that they, anyone that comes to him is worthy of him. Verse 47, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. When you follow God's instructions, do you notice how boldly you become in the faith? Peter said, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know if he was talking with the men that came with him or whether or not it was just a rhetorical question. However, the Holy Spirit was leading and Peter was just following. Verse 48. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Now, Peter ordered, or as the King James Version say, commanded for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Cornelius and his family have become heirs to the kingdom. They have been invited to the kingdom's party and God gave away the best party favor ever, the Holy Spirit. I wish I could say this was the end of it all, but Peter was a Jew that witnessed to Gentiles. So Peter was almost canceled. So stay tuned for my next episode of The End of Castles. Gentile conversion, Peter explains from Acts chapter 11 verses 1 through 18. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of The End of Castles. And as always, when godly wisdom ascends, a new mindset begins. Bye-bye. <laughs>